In inductive teaching and learning, you walk into your class and you start with an intriguing question, an intriguing set of data, an intriguing challenge. I want you to design a heating and cooling system for the classroom that we're sitting in. The people in this room literally don't know what heat is. They are not prepared to design a heating and cooling system for this classroom. But as they grapple with those questions, what happens is they sit down and they go, really, what does it mean to design a heating and cooling system for this classroom? What do, what do I need to know? What they think about is, well, on a cold winter's day, if I want to keep the room comfortable, I need to pump heat into the room at the same rate at which it leaks out, out of the room. But then they get to the point where they go, I have no clue how to figure out how fast heat is leaking out of this room on a cold winter's day. I need to know something about heat transfer. So as the instructor, you say, Great question. If you want to model the rate of heat transfer leaving this room, we need to know something about mechanisms. And once I've identified the mechanism, there are various equations that govern the rate of heat transfer by that mechanism. So I'm going to lecture on all the things I was going to lecture on anyway. And they make some progress. They get snagged somewhere. And they go, you never told me how to solve a heat transfer problem where I had several resistances in series. How do I do that? So at that point, you step in and you talk about how to solve for heat transfer through a series of resistances. Instead of saying, trust me, really, you need to know this stuff, you introduce a real problem. And when you're talking about the theory and the equations, students aren't wondering, why is Prince talking about this? Because they know why I'm talking about it. I'm talking about this because they asked a question about it. I was asking them to do something that engineers do, and they figured out along the way that to do this thing that engineers do, I need to know this stuff. The class dynamic is remarkably different. I'm talking about the same stuff, but the context is different, and so the dynamic is very different. In deductive teaching and learning, it tends to be very instructor-centered. The only time that the students actually do anything active is on their homework problem at the end or in the laboratory. In inductive teaching and learning, students tend to get active earlier. Because I dump this problem on you, or I ask you this question, or I show you this data set, and right away, I ask you to do something with it. And you, you engage, and you talk, and you struggle, and you do something that's not listening to me lecture. So you're going to do something active fairly early on. So it's an easy way of getting active learning into your class.